Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the Sunday after the elevation or exaltation of the life-creating cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The cross is in the center of the church, decorated with flowers. We remember how the cross was discovered in Jerusalem after hundreds of years after the crucifixion. How the pagans and inhabitants of Jerusalem tried to hide it and to defame it and to distort it in all kinds of ways. But it was discovered thanks to the efforts of the Holy Eagle of the Apostle Empress Yelena and the Patriarch Macarius of Jerusalem took the cross and elevated it so that everyone can see. And everyone came and venerated the cross and many miracles were performed. The cross is an instrument of death, but by the cross our Lord died and descended into hell and changed the cross by his victory, changed it into a weapon of peace, a weapon of glory, a weapon of victory. For the cross is not just simply a symbol, but the cross is life-giving to us. It is through the cross that our Lord rose from the dead and joy was given to all the world. And by virtue of that, we are united, reunited with God. That through this weapon of hatred, which has been transfigured into a weapon of love, reunites us to God. And by virtue of the cross, as St. Paul says in today's reading to the Galatians, that we are no longer bound in the flesh. We are no longer bound to the demands of the law. Or rather, we don't receive salvation through the law, but through the cross. The cross is our strength. The cross is our glory. The cross is our purpose in life. Yes, the cross is our purpose. Because today, Jesus says in the Gospel, according to St. Mark, if you want to follow me, that's our purpose, following Christ. Then our purpose is exhibited by the following words of Jesus. If you want to follow me, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. We deny our will. We deny our desires, our passions, our intentions. We struggle and take our cross, and our cross represents for us that struggle against our passions because we are all inclined to sin. God said in the, the book of Genesis that man from his youth up is inclined to evil. Because we live in a fallen world, it's our natural, quote-unquote, natural inclination, natural reaction to serve ourself, to be selfish, to give in to all our desires and passions. We are inclined to do this. St. Paul even lamented when he says, The good that I want to do, I do not do. But the, that which I hate and I do not want to do, I do. He describes that inner battle that lies within each and every one of us. That battle between good and evil. That battle between living according to the flesh or living according to the spirit. That battle of being truthful versus being deceitful. That battle of being prideful versus being humble. Selfish versus selflessness. That battle rages in our hearts every day. 
and there are days we are overwhelmed. We can't control what we say. Our thoughts are running away with us. We eat and drink, not out of need, but out of comfort. We become prisoners. It was actually this purpose that our Lord died on the cross, to release us from this slavery to sin. So it, the cross is our purpose in life to strengthen us, to reassign that inclination. That inclination to sin now must be reassigned to an inclination to do good. It must be our natural reaction, our quick, even unthinking reaction to do good, to control our thoughts, to watch what we say, to rein in the demands of our appetites, to humble our will. And we change that inclination day after day. We pray, we fast. Fasting by itself is a great tool not to be used by itself. I mean, fasting deserves our attention. Because when we fast, of course, we show restraint. We show discipline. We control our desires. But we also show obedience. We sacrifice our will. That's one of the most common daily activities to decide what I want to eat. And we give that up. And when we do that with prayer, we grow in obedience to God. Because ultimately, we have to follow His will. Ultimately, we follow His commandments. Ultimately, we follow His design in life. And so, brothers and sisters, when we see the cross in the center of the church, we exalt it, we elevate it in our lives by taking up our own cross. We elevate and exalt the cross by fighting our passions, by praying and fasting, by showing discipline. We exalt and elevate the cross when we truly strive to change reassign the inclination that we have towards sin and direct it to good, to God. And ultimately, wrapped up in this desire to reassign this inclination to sin means that now our life is not egocentric, but theocentric. Our life is not centered on me, myself, and I, but my life is centered on God. St. Paul also said today in today's reading, it is not I who lives, but Christ in me. And so the cross is the purpose of our life. That's why we wear it around our necks. That's why we have it on the walls of our home. That's why it it occupies a central place in the church. The cross is the purpose of our life. And when we carry a heavy cross, it protects us from falling into sin. The cross is our protection, our vanguard. The cross is our strength and power. The cross is our glory and symbol over evil. So when we venerate the cross, brothers and sisters, let us also add the words that through thy cross, joy has come into all the world. Through thy wounds, heal the wounds of my fallen soul. And through thy passionless passion, heal me of all my sinful passions and deliver me from death. 
Before thy cross, O Master, we fall down in worship, and thy holy resurrection we glorify. Glory to thee, O God. Glory to thee. Amen. <laughs>